Hi, I'm Dave Starlett and this is uh, video demonstration painting number one, first attempt, and it's particularly for the folks at Otley and Garforth Art Clubs who are supposed to be demonstrating for. And what I'm demonstrating is oil painting with a knife, and we're going to do a woodland scene with mist, and it's based on these two, this, this photo of Farnley Estate, uh, Woodland Meadow, and a little interpretation I've done on it there. And what I'm going to do today is, is work with a limited palette. I'm using just two colours, French ultramarine and yellow ochre, and white to give it some distance. And uh, hopefully this is of interest to people who are using other techniques than oils and who use brushes, but it'll give an idea of things like depth. So I'm going to start first by putting on a sort of a background mistiness. And so I'm mixing the paints here. And this is going to be applied quite flatly, very much like spreading margarine on bread. Okay, I think we're ready. So, I just fly this across the canvas with a scraping motion. Okay, so that's quickly done, maybe 10 minutes, and it's just a background mistiness. What I'm going to do next is put in, if you can see from the photo, the distant, the distant ground. So we just want a slightly lower value of paint. So what I've already mixed, I'm just going to add in a little bit of the yellow ochre, a little bit of the, the French ultramarine, and just produce a slightly darker shade. Okay. And so this is going to run across the back of the, 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 the more distant part. Perhaps a little bit too dark. don't want too hard a line here. I may even blur it slightly later. Again, no texture at the moment. And now I'm going to go for the foreground on which this, this tree here sits. So again, more French ultramarine, more yellow ochre. I 
it's taking on a distinctly green colour, that's fine. And we're going to have a, a, a small hill somewhere here. And I'm just going to even this out now. So that's added some nice texture on there. What we could also do is to add a little bit of a path in. Just a hint of them. I once painted a series of, of views of a long distance walk. And what people always liked was the idea that they could walk into the painting. So that's not much more than a hint. Okay, so we've got the all the canvas covered now, and I'm going to start putting in the trees. And here I'm going to switch tools rather. This is the painting knife I use most. It's got that lovely long side for smoothing out. But when I come to do the trees, I actually am very wary of getting this sort of triangular shape stuff because I'm going to be a lot of sort of dabbing onto the surface. So what I tend to do is, and this is, works easily with rather cheaper brands of uh, painting knives, is that I've cut the end off with a pair of tin snips and just uh, ground it down with a file. So I've got a, a, a nice smooth round end on there. And I'm going to use this to put some of the more distant trees on. And these are going to be just a little hint uh, darker than the than the background. Perhaps that's a bit much. Let's go back.
An alternative method is to just use a little piece of, of kitchen roll. Dip it in the paint. That's this little hint. And I can add in a, a tree trunk with a smaller knife. Okay, and I'm gradually working forward using, again, a paint that has a little less white in it. And it's the value of the paint, effectively the amount of white on, that gives the visual clue as to just how distant these trees are. You know, there's the question, there's always size, but is it a small tree at a distance? Sorry, sorry a small tree close to, or a large tree far off. Let's come over to here. In this case the trunk is going to come a little bit further forward, further down. If I put those on a bit strong, I can lighten them with the tissue. Now, in my original photo, I just had one dominant tree. But because I've got this long canvas, what I'm going to try and do is balance it with another one, a slightly smaller tree. We want one to act as the focal point, which will be about here, towards the top of this hill. But there will be a smaller one further to the to our left as we look at the painting. So let, let's have a go at this one first. I may even want to put the, the trunk of the tree on first. And I'm going to use the, the tissue paper method. Trick with trees not to make them too solid. I was always told to leave a gap for the birds to fly through. I'm getting some edges here that are a little bit too straight, so I'm going to resort to the, the round-ended knife. So what sort of trees are these? I think originally most of them are oaks, but you will get occasional ashes here. And if you want to distinguish an ash at a distance, you might want to just have little upturned ends of branches like this. bit more solid towards the centre perhaps. 
And now my dominant tree is going to come in here. And I'm coming a little bit stronger in the colour. Very typically with wood pasture, woodland pasture, which is what this type of grassland with occasional mature trees, you tend to get a very flat bottom where cattle, which are dominantly browsing animals, will have um, eaten the leaves off the bottom. No harm in one overlapping another, it helps to establish that relationship. This tree, judging by the photo, the sort of rather clumpiness of the leaves, appears to be a sycamore. So we get some quite dense um, clumps of leaves. Still the occasional gap. For the first time I'm really studying the photo to try and get this uh, close to the original tree. <coughs> and I'm just now going to carefully work over this to make that a little bit more even. I think the trunk needs to be a little bit stronger. Okay, in smoothing over the leaves a bit, I've lost some of the branches, so I'll just put those in little little hints. You don't want to join them all up. It's quite nice to see. An occasional bit of branch. Likewise in the ash here. Looking over all the composition, I notice I've got quite a big gap here. Well, we're not keeping accurate to the, the photo as such, uh, but I am, so I'm going to put a little bit of growth in, in here. Very quickly. I also think this one's a little bit feeble, so I'm going to boost that slightly. And finally, because it sort of disappears off the edges of the canvas, and the photo does have some of these on, but I'm just going to have some trees coming in from either side. And on the other side, 
There's actually a small bush down here which can go on. And then a bit darker, indicating that it's closer. This is still a big gap. Some trunks in those. Too much? It's, it's There's still a lot of work to be done on this, um, but it's tweaking really. But the one thing I think, well, you know, here, here is a big area with nothing, and should should we put something in there? And there's one obvious one, which is that I'm just going to change my tools slightly here for into finger mode. pale sun coming through and I suppose if we've got a little bit of sun coming through then we can afford a little bit of shadow. Let's not overdo it, we've got mist is going to weaken that sun. Again, I think I'm going to bring this tree closer. Okay, so still a bit of finishing off work to be done on this, but I think in, in generality you've got a bit of an idea, and what I'm hoping to have achieved is an, an idea of depth. You know, these, these more distant trees, gradually coming forward, a little bit of foreground, but the whole aspect of the mist is, is, is creating that distance. We've got a little path in here. Maybe the path should have gone round there. Maybe I'll change so I can do that. But meanwhile, I think I'm fairly close to that. I'd like to thank you for your patience in listening to the video. Um, if you want to have a go at this yourself, please do so. Um, whether it's in oils, whether you're with a painting knife, watercolour, acrylics, um, a biro on the back of your gas bill, who knows. But give it a go and if you want any feedback from me um, by all means email me an image at davidstarley at yahoo.co.uk okay i wish you well in the coming weeks we're in troubled times but at least you've got painting to look forward to and to take your mind off other considerations <laughs>